What's up, everybody? Welcome back. We're here with some more PGA DFS picks and lineup advice for FanDuel and DraftKings, this time for one of the biggest events of the year, the PGA Players Championship. Welcome. I'm Brian Jester, co-founder here at Occupy Fantasy. And as you see on screen here, the first Millie maker of the PGA season in 2023. Huge contests all around the industry. Uh, the fifth major, some would say. So tons of of huge contests and tons of big prizes to be won. And we're here to break it down for you. So if you're new here, welcome. What we normally do in these videos, we talk about the event itself, characteristics that help shape who should be in our player pool. We talk about the weather. We analyze the betting markets, sharp sports books, what they're telling us, whose odds to win are improving. And then we talk about some ownership, who are the most popular players expected to be, and who are some under the radar plays sub 5% ownership that can help us win these big prizes on FanDuel and DraftKings. So let's get into it. Now, if you haven't already, the daily plug is up. OccupyFantasy.com, our writer, Niramada, always does a fantastic job laying out who uh, are the top plays, what the course characteristics are, the weather, lineup construction tips. So make sure you go check that out. And he talks about the weather in this event specifically. So let's start there. Let's start with the weather. And if we bring up WindFinder, our trusted resource, for wind when it comes to PGA DFS. We see on Thursday, relatively calm conditions. Uh, if you played this event last year in DFS or you watch this event, you know that there was massive wind, truly affected the tournament, created some crazy wind splits. Uh, not necessarily will be the case this year. So pretty much even conditions all day Thursday. We go down to Friday, it gets a little windier from a gust perspective. As you see, the wind speed won't eclipse 15 miles per hour for most of the day. Uh, but the gusts do pick up a little bit in the afternoon. So I could see an argument to say that Friday afternoon golfers have it the worst here. But again, it's just gusts, not full-on consistent winds the entire time. So if you're looking to play uh, a wind wave advantage, maybe you play guys that are teeing off Thursday afternoon, Friday morning. I don't know if I would let it shape my entire player pool. And it doesn't look like there's enough wind to truly impact. If you remember last year, even remember the U.S. Open, there was there were big wind advantages. And those wind advantages can change. And those waves can change. I don't know if it'll be enough here to truly impact it. Now, if you're breaking ties, sure, maybe you go with the Thursday afternoon, Friday morning golfers. If you're making a bunch of lineups, there's always an argument to make some subsets of your lineups be Thursday afternoon only or Thursday morning only, just in case a wave advantage does materialize. Uh, but for those of us just entering a couple lineups, those of us who are not looking – uh, unless there are major edges. I don't think there will be one this week. But again, the forecast can change. Let's monitor this throughout the day and throughout the evening. All right, let's go back to DraftKings. And let's think about this event a little more because usually it's even more star-studded than it is this year. Last year, before all the live golfers went over to live, uh, we saw this basically like a major. But instead this year, without the live guys, no Cam Smith, no DJ, Ustazen, all these guys have been in winning players' championship lineups over the past couple of years. Uh, they're not here this year. So really, this just typically looks like one of the elevated events that we've seen over the past couple of weeks. And the reason I bring that up is because historically, when it comes to majors and really loaded events, balanced lineups have won out more often than not. That means not playing guys in the 10K range just because we have so many Great golfers in the 7, 8, and 9K range. Now, that's the same this week as it has been for other elevated events, but just a touch below. So usually I'm very against playing 10K golfers in the largest contests during these weeks, historically. I don't think that'll be the case this week because we've seen Rom, Rory, Scheffler be in winning lineups for all these elevated events so far this year. And that kind of speaks to how this event will likely play out as well. So I don't think you should immediately dismiss the 10K golfers this week. Yes, balanced lineups still will probably be a priority, as Niramada pointed out in the plug. Uh, but from someone who never plays John Rahm, I will be willing to play him this week, as we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, and there will be ways that 10K golfers and 11K golfers will be in the winning lineup this week, unlike the Players' Championship events of years past. Now, once we get to Augusta, once we get to the Opens, yes, then we'll go back more towards the balanced lineups as we get more Euro guys. The live guys are allowed to play those, so we'll get stronger fields, even stronger than we see this week. So balance is preferred, sub-10K sub golfers primarily, 
But again, don't be scared. And I don't think many people will. Their ownership doesn't reflect this. But Ron, Rory, Scheffler, Xander, these guys that we should be more willing to build than we would have in years past at the Players' Championship. Now, speaking of these guys, let's look at the betting markets really quickly. If, been watching the video, if you have been watching these videos, you know we like to look at the Sharp sports books. We monitor them. We track whose odds to win have improved at all of the Sharp sports books. We end up with these overlap plays, trifecta plays, Sharp play, plays, whatever you want to call them. They've been, they've been performing incredibly in DFS. And as of 11.30 a.m. Eastern on Wednesday this week, we have six names that meet the criteria. So let's run through them. First one on the list is John Rahm. Now, we get the best golfer in the world. His odds to win, despite being a favorite, the favorite, have improved at every sharp sports book that we track. Maybe people will be a little less off him after he imploded round two and round three last week, despite starting seven under and looking like he was going to freight train the field once again. Now, if we go to the model at OccupyFantasy.com, we look at his projected ownership, and we sort by DraftKings price, we see Rom just only 15%. There's a chance he he's under that that uh, 15% high owned threshold mark, which would just be insane. And that is enough for me to to play John Rom this week. Not insanely owned. The, in fact, the lowest ownership we've seen on him since the start of the season. And all the sharp sports books are moving his odds to win. Uh, it doesn't get much better than that. Now I say this as I started recording this video. It went from six golfers to four golfers for. Uh, the Sharp Sportsbook plays. A couple guys just barely got left off the list. So let's continue with this this list of four. And again, this will change throughout the day, and I'll put the final list in our Discord later this evening, so make sure you're a part of that as well. Next guy on the list is Keegan Bradley, who was on this list last week, backdoored a top 10, uh, got hurt a little bit by the wind on Friday. But Keegan Bradley, just 7,500, will be one of the most popular golfers in this event because it was finished last week, because of his odds to win. We look at Keegan in the model. We have him projected for 22%, one of the most popular golfers. But again, he's an incredible value at his price. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, another 10K golfer, is a sharp sports book play this week. Let's go back to Scotty Scheffler. Was in contention all of last week. 10,600, ended up finishing fourth. But, you know, his his results are just as good, if not better, than John Rahm's uh, so far this year. And we bring the model back up and we look at Scotty Scheffler, 20%. So 5 6% higher than John Rahm. Still a popular play, but a popular play for a good reason. And the final guy is Sahith Thigala at just 11%, the lowest owned golfer of this group, which is interesting to me. So we're always looking for low-owned golfers, always looking for guys outside of the top 10, top 15 of ownership. And Thigala, his odds to win have improved at every Sharp sports book that we track. So... He's been on this, on this list a couple times this year. A big finish is around the corner for him. Maybe we get it this week. 11%. Let's look at Thigala's event logs here on DraftKings. So, yeah, I mean, T14, T6, T4, and three of his last four starts. So, it's clearly, it's clicking for him. Uh, and we get him at sub-15% ownership as a sharp sportsbook play. So, other guys that were bouncing around this list were Rory, Matthew Fitzpatrick, and Jason Day, who's a great transition now to talk about ownership on this slate because Jason Day is going to be the most popular golfer in the event. No question about it. As we sort by DraftKings ownership in the model, we have Jason Day at 27%. He's going to eclipse 40% probably in high dollar stuff, in smaller field stuff. He honestly might even eclipse 30% in the millionaire maker, the $25 millionaire maker on DraftKings. 27% 27% we haven't projected, so somewhere in that 25 to 30% range. And it's easy to see why, right? We bring up Jason Day's event logs. First of all, if you're just event log watching, tournament watching, you see T10, T9, 5th, 7th, 18th this year. Been playing out of his mind uh, since the start of the year. And then, really, the true reason is if you look at, this is a great way, if you don't have access to our model, you're trying to figure out ownership yourself, the easiest way to figure it out is compare a golfer's odds to win to where he sits in the DraftKings pricing tier. And that'll tell you. So if we look back at the model and we sort by odds to win, we see Jason Day has the eighth best odds to win the Players' Championship, according to our partner sportsbook, Sugar House, New Jersey. But if we look at DraftKings pricing, he is the 20th ranked golfer. So eighth best odds to win, yet 19 golfers are ranked above him. There's no, uh, the, of course, he's going to be popular. And of course, he's going to be the most popular. 
uh, when it comes to DraftKings. Top five in ownership on FanDuel as well. So Jason Day, just outrageous ownership on DraftKings this week. Big question is, what do we do with that? Because he's a fantastic play, right? In form, has course history, betting markets like him. <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to find reasons not to play Jason Day. However, I will say, if you're playing the biggest contest on DraftKings, you're playing smaller contests, I get it. You want to play him, just get different one other spot. Sure, I get it. The largest contest, you have to think about it. Is it easier to win a million dollars when you play Jason Day and 30% of the field has him and he's optimal? Or is it much easier to win a million dollars if Jason Day finishes outside the top 20? Misses the cut. Good players miss the cut here all the time. So it's a really tough course. Or 30% of the field is wiped out when Jason Day misses the cut. Obviously, the answer is you have a better chance of winning a million dollars or a large field GPP if you don't have Jason Day in your lineup. However, I get it. Very scary to fade a guy who checks all the boxes like that. But as we've seen in the past, it's really tough. But, you know, we have seen GPP winners have these types of guys in their lineup. So there's, there's two, two arguments, two sides of the coin, obviously. I think the easy answer is despite checking all the boxes, the largest contest, you go underweight or fade Jason Day. However, if you play him, there are plenty of other guys to play with him to go lower own. Just don't play all the chalk with him. So my my recommendation in a high-risk, high-reward approach would be not to play him. But I understand if you want to play him because he does check every single box. Other golfers that eclipse 20% projected ownership this week. Jason Day, Cantlay, 9,700. We talked about Rory already. JT at just 9,400. Keegan Bradley, we've mentioned already. Scheffler, we've talked about. And Tyrrell Hatton, top five last week in a similar type course. Uh, tough conditions where he's always going to thrive even if his face shows that <laughs> he is not thriving at all. Uh, other guys, Hovland, Homa, Corey Connors, Tom Kim, guys that look at 15% or more. So we're looking at 10 to 12 golfers, 15% or more. Nothing too crazy. All these guys make a lot of sense, right? There's a reason that they're popular. So just limit yourself, depending on the contest you play, limit yourself to the amount of these guys you have in your life. If you're playing the millionaire, maybe you only want to have two, maybe three, depending on the other guys in your life. If you're playing a smaller contest, you have three, four, maybe even five. Uh, but it's a balance on the size of the contest and the popularity of all the golfers in your lineup. Now, let's talk about the fun part. Uh, we talked about Eric Cole a couple of weeks ago. He finished second. We've, we've, we've mentioned some other guys in this video all season that have been sub-5% that have won tournaments. So we use the filter here on, uh, on the model. DraftKings ownership, 6% or less. I'll give you five or six names that stand out to me. Every single player's championship, every single GPP on FanDuel and DraftKings has essentially been won with a 5% or less golfer in their lineup, and certainly a couple of golfers left less than 10% in the lineup. So, guys that stand out to me this week. We talked about Tom Hoagie. Played great for all but three holes last week. Epic meltdown, seven over the final three holes to miss the cut by one. Uh, let's assume he doesn't do that. Ways you can, here are two ways you can find golfers who are undervalued from an ownership perspective. Guys who have either got the bad draw of a wind wave even in the previous week, which is what happened to Tom Hoagie, or guys who got a bad draw uh, in this event last year. We talked about the wind on Friday in the players last year. Guys whose records, course history, are screwed up a little bit by that. You can find a little bit of value. So Hoagie's one that fits the bill there. Davis Riley obviously is in the plug this week as uh, Niramata writes him up basically every week. But Riley especially is better on southeastern golf courses. Florida fits the bill here. 6%, 6,500, way underpriced for his ceiling. Uh, it can help you fit in some of those guys like John Rahm or Scotty Scheffler. Two guys where accuracy matters more for them than distance. And if you look at the daily plug this week when Niramata breaks down the course and which attributes are important, he says all things being equal – I will wait accuracy ahead of distance this week. So we should be looking at guys like Webb Simpson, Matt Kuchar, who their accuracy is the best part of their game. They have had success at this course in the past, of course. They've had success at similar courses. And there's 5% projected ownership on DraftKings. We love to see that. Simpson especially stands out to me. The other way outside of looking at guys who caught the wrong part of the wind wave, is looking at guys who finished Sunday of the previous week really strong. It means all parts of their game are clicking. Webb Simpson finished first at Bay Hill on Sunday, six under, by the way, on Sunday, which was insane in those conditions. Six under, he was first in tee to green, around the green, putting. Basically every imaginable category, Webb was first in that field. And those will be important this week as well. So Webb Simpson, 5%, one of the best 5% plays I think you can find. Scrolling on down, Justin Suh, same boat as, as uh, Davis Riley. 
high ceiling, low ownership, low price. A couple other guys that I like. Let's see who I can point out. The last one I will say is Nick Taylor, 2% projected ownership. Already has a top 10 in an elevated in an elevated event this year, and a top 20 in another elevated event. Again, we're looking at guys who have shown success in elevated events, guys who have shown success in similar courses, guys who are playing well. Basically, any reason we can find to play a guy who's 2%, we're going to do that. And Nick Taylor is a guy here as well. So, again, I talked about different ways to find lower-owned golfers, and I'm sure the betting markets will reveal some more later this afternoon. So after this video, make sure you go read the Daily Plug, OccupyFantasy.com. Niramada will come in with the Wednesday update. That will have some betting market updates, some additional thoughts from him as the betting markets have matured over the week. Uh, that will post around 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, in Discord later this evening, I will post the final sharp sportsbook plays as I see them, 8 or 9 p.m. Final ownership update will go up in the model mm, around the same time, 8 or 9 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you're checking back all of those. Daily plug, the Occupy model, the lineup builder, which allows you to build up to 300 lineups. All those are ready to go to help you crush the player's championship. And if you made it this far and you like the video, we'd appreciate it if you subscribe. Obviously helps the channel, but because of YouTube's algorithm, sometimes you may not see this video in the future, even if you like it. So subscribe to the channel, get notified when we go live, upload these PGA videos every single Wednesday for the rest of the season. Give us a thumbs up. We appreciate it. It helps others find the content. Any questions, I will monitor the channel. Comment on this video below. I will be up until probably midnight Eastern tonight, and I will get back to you. Uh, Discord is the best way, obviously, to get in touch with us, answer any questions, sweat out the contest with us, tilt John Rom with us. So uh, make sure you join our Discord server, occupyfantasy.com slash Discord. All the links you need, all the info is in the description below. So Brian Jester for Occupy Fantasy, thank you for listening, and good luck at the 2023 Players' Championship.